Hi, welcome to a new video dedicated to a new FPV eraser. This is the Emax Baby Hawk Hair and this is the 2 inch edition. So, uh, this model uh, is pretty popular right now and you have two uh, versions, one 3 inches and one 2 inches. So I've got the smallest one. What we have, we have a very strong full carbon base uh, FPV eraser with an uh, arm with 3 millimeters of thickness. In terms of electronics, we have a dedicated F3 Omnibus based flight controller, including, of course, a noisy ship. We have some strong 1106 motors, some 2 inch uh, quadriblade props, and uh, for the FPV ring, we have a switchable output. Power uh, module from a 25 milliwatt up to 200 milliwatt, 40 channel based, okay, and um, with a linear antenna. For the ESC, uh, we got some basic 12 ampere, but with a pickup 15, but it's supporting a 4S battery and of course it's barely as the Shock 600. Uh, what is missing on front? We have a Foxer Arrow uh, cam CCD camera and where there is a possibility to plug a small OSD uh, uh, module to change some uh, internal settings. Let's discover this content of the box. So I already pre-installed some element. So for example, I already uh, pre-installed the props and you have to know that we have in the box two rows of four uh, props, okay, closed into this uh, foam. So I already installed four of them. What is, uh, we have a bag with a lot of screws and you have to use the M2X screws with seven millimeters of uh, lens okay to install the prop and we have some remaining one we have some longest the longest screws is this one to attach for example the top canopy okay and the smallest we have also is to attach laterally for example and to set the orientation of the uh, camera what we have also and already mentioned we have a free uh, GST plug I'm not sure why it's used for but the more important is this uh, small module okay ending with a two position one millimeters uh, micro JST connector where you will be able to plug it okay it's a little bit tricky but on the lateral side here just we can see guess the uh, uh, mail connector and this is a, an extension cable to access directly to the OSD port of the Forkser camera that's great so if you want you will be able to change some camera setting without disassembling everything so what is uh, beneath we have two instruction manual one for the uh, Forkser camera okay and it's a 600 TBL with a relatively wide field of view. It's the Arrow Mini and we have everything here. Okay, how to tune, for example, if you want to change it from NTAC to uh, PAL, it's possible through this OSD. We have all the setting and all the navigation. In terms of field of view, uh, it's about 120 degrees of field of view. Okay. That's great. And here, the more important is this baby air where you can find all the characteristics that they mentioned, the weight, etc., etc. We have the BNF version and two versions with some Fear Sky and Fly Sky receiver, if I'm not wrong, and some PNP. So uh, we have the list here, and the more important, I would say, is this last one is how to use the video transmitter and to tune the settings. It's a little bit change different than the other uh, video transmitter. First of all, uh, you will need to press five seconds uh, the uh, video transmitter button then uh, you will be able to uh, select either the uh, band selection the channel selection and the power selection the band is written with the hair the channel with a C and the power with a P so when just press short press to cycle between this P C and uh, air okay one is you select, for example, the band here, you will need to press at least two seconds, okay? And when it's done, you can now select one of these uh, five supported band by short pressing and you will cycle between F, R, A, E, B, and E, okay? Then repress two seconds to return to the original menu to select either the band, the channel, and the power. 
whatever at any moment if you long press more than five seconds you will exit from this uh, video transmitter menu so it's a little bit different but it takes a couple of seconds to be uh, accustomed with and is not so so bad i would say um, the we we'll start with we'll continue with the video transmitter. If you want to select it, you will need to check on the uh, right port. There is a small, small button here, okay, here. And this is where you can click from the external point of view. You need absolutely a relatively thin pin to select it because it's not so obvious. And we will see that the consequence is most of the time when you will do, we need a selection you will probably need to uh, remove the top canopy how to proceed you will need to remove these two small one in m2 format one here and the second here and the two here one and the third and the four here they are all of them in m2 format i would say the main problem with this um, action that these two front m2 screws are also uh, playing with tilt orientation of the tuning. It means that when you will remove it, um, the camera can, can move a bit and it will be more uh, harder to re-enter the screws, okay, because the same screws is locking the ca top canopy as well tuning the tilt angle. It's not a super great design from my point of view. More, when I receive it, as you can see here, on the top, we can guess the uh, uh, here the Fiesky receiver. And here on the small, white part this is a bind button and when i receive it this uh, receiver was completely shift from more on the right and it was impossible whatever the tip you wanted to use to access through uh, without removing the can uh, the canopy so what i did i remove it and shift it a little bit to access now much more easily from an external sign to the bind button here so now i can click on it without uh, removing everything uh, that's uh, another problem let's continue with the left side utility and what you can guess we can guess a condensator it's great it's helping a lot to filter out all the video interferences uh, may be present in the video in other hand uh, look that where is locating the USB port. Uh, this one is very close to the top canopy and if you use any type of micro USB port you won't be able to uh, attach it because the connector, the plastic part, will probably be blocked. You will need to use a very thin one at least in terms of um, plastic uh, housing okay to be sure to insert correctly like this one okay and no problem at all now to uh, insert it, okay? So that's another drawback. Any, not any micro USB cable can be very uh, compatible with more. You will need to bend gently, very gently and slowly the condensator to be sure to not break it. This one is soldered in parallel to the main lead power. We have an XT30 connector. So that's great, it's helping a lot and be aware during a crash, it can be a, a pop-up uh, ejected, okay? But it's, it's really, uh, it could be a really bad luck to uh, uh, crash it. Okay, so the main, I would say the main problem for the condensator is by multiple USB uh, insertion, ejection or battery insertion, you can probably damage it very first time. We have some two inch props, not among the uh, biggest uh, and uh, and we have some super strong 1106 motors spinning at 7500 kV. And in comparison, let's compare it with, uh, uh, for example, the Eachin uh, Lizard 105S. I really like it, okay? Or another Eachin model. This is the, um, uh, I will say, the uh, RC Mini, really beasty. This one got some three inch props, as you can see, much more, uh, uh, wider and the same time of motors 1106 and you can see that the frame are more or less the, the same so let's give you some indication for example so uh, this um, uh, Emax baby ox is uh, something about okay it's a zero is about a uh, 120, uh, 100, 120, this is the RC Mini, okay, 120, and compared to the uh, Baby Ox Mini, okay, it's uh, 
something much more smaller, 10 millimeters less, okay? So uh, with the same type of motor, we have something a some little bit more compact, but this one got some three inch props, three blade, and this one two inch quadri blade. So we'll see if uh, the weight saved, okay, uh, can compensate uh, the uh, shortness of the props. Let's give some indication of the weight, for example. So without a lipo, uh, this one, okay, we remove the uh, landscape to be sure with everything installed is about 89.2 grams is not super light you have to know that the top canopy is about 8 grams okay but it's really pretty hard to fly without the rc mini is about uh, 95.2 so close to 6 gram more okay and the uh, lizard okay is about 86 so a uh, little bit more lighter and this one got some 2.5 inch props okay quadri blade but smaller motors uh, all of them can support 4s that's probably the more important let's continue to discover with the hardware um, the battery strap here okay is relatively thin and uh, to be honest I'm not a great fan. Look at that we have something glue in the middle and versus multi uh, attachment. Okay, uh, when you will um, um, fasten it, uh, this part will break versus time. So I guess within a couple of flights, you will need to change other battery strap. Okay, this one it can be really easily installed, but be aware with this lower plate in case of a crash some uh, MOSFET element can be in contact of the carbon element and you can have a short and a killing, for example, part of the AC. That's uh, another uh, drawback. As I said mentioned uh, previously, um, uh, the camera can be up tilted and you will need an M2 Allen key, not provided in a bottle, to set this one. And you can see that the nominal one is not zero, you have something about 20 degrees and versus something very, very ultra aggressive above 45 degrees so uh, it clearly is not a beginner of friendly machine is more targeting uh, advanced fpv flyer uh, the camera is a little bit exposed to a frontal crash is not so catastrophic okay let's continue we have the uh, fierce sky uh, antenna linear one and good news um this Fear Sky receiver is flashed with the firmware exporting the RSSI on the last channel to be more precise on AUX5. You have to bind it in D8 mode, okay, and uh, international one, a non LBTR a default firmware uh, with RSSI is installed. Uh, the linear antenna of the 5.8 GHz antenna is more or less okay, even is the, not the best situation uh, to maximize the. Um, uh, radio and frequency propagation by default it's exporting in uh in 200 milliwatts and uh as soon as you will uh plug the battery you can guess an h displayed mean high power okay so let's power it we have here our pre-tune on e4 and uh, this one is also when you will tune press this button uh, uh, you will also display an H to say to high value, so 200 milliwatts. It's a uh, I regret maybe that the uh, output power is not also displayed in this uh, cycled uh, uh, frequency band and frequency channel. Uh, this, this third information could be very important, whatever. So we have a lot of light and the uh, frequency, the receiver is here. Okay, I already pre bound, and another um, small problem with it. Uh, um, when you power the machine with the USB, the receiver is not powered. So it means that you cannot bind it more easily with the USB bank by inserting the micro USB port. Uh, well, you need absolutely to use the LiPo to bind, okay? And as I said previously, you probably need first to shift a bit this one to access to the bind button uh, from the small top uh, hole. So some minor details. Uh, show that is not perfect, but is not so bad. Um, let's give some indication about the carbon structure and the impression is that it's rock solid. So we have something about three millimeters. So that's great. And even more, look that we have another play carbon blade reinforcing the uh, lower structure. We have one here. So with this one is also two millimeters in sandwich to so two millimeters carbon 
are taking into sandwich the uh, three arms carbon. So it sounds super, super solid. Uh, look that the video transmitter is in clean. Okay, it's not because uh, probably to uh, follow the shape of the uh, um, um, top can plastic canopy part. Okay, so um, let's very power one more time and show you all the default with the information and uh, you will see that so I will power this mesh this FPV monitors and you can see that the image is super uh, great thanks to the CCD camera and I will turn on the uh, transmitter already pre-bound and you will see that the RSSI is well uh, uh, display on the top right we have the uh, crossbar we have the flight time we have the battery voltage the name but I like also to display for example this throttle input okay and um, voila so maybe one minor information is missing but uh, I will say that the uh, out of the box, uh, the uh, configuration is pretty well done. You can just plug your battery and that's uh, all. So that's great. So um, now it's time to check the default beta flight settings. Okay. And to see if this works uh, already shown in the uh, uh, OSD information uh, are definitively confirmed that everything is well configured out of the box. And uh, then let's fly it. Okay, here is a beta flight configuration part. Let's check that. So I plug first the USB only, uh, no battery yet. Uh, we press connection. And the first things to do as usual is to check the version install. Okay, we have no bus of F3 because we don't have something written F4. Uh, 3.2.2, almost the last one. And now you have the branch 3.3, uh, .3, but one of the most recent Betafly version. And we will jump all the default settings to be sure, uh, in any case, to be able to restore uh, all factory settings. In case you did a mistake, okay, just uh, okay, create a text file paste this information saved and if you need to restore just paste here in the cell line and don't forget to type save to restore everything okay let's now have a tour so i will press sign up it will reboot okay and i will press connect okay sometimes you need to press twice connect to open and we have Okay, the machine with zero as accelerometer, so you can calibrate eventually. Let's check the port. We have only the serial turn on for you have three is normal for uh, this SBUS uh, Fear Sky receiver uh, pre install. Let's check the configuration. Da -da -da. We have a quad X, D Shock 600 is a uh, turn on, and we don't have motor stop, but it will spin at 4.5 percent. Well, I like these settings. Uh, in terms of uh, frequencies, we have both the zeros and the main PID loop set to 4 kilos. We can uh, disable the barometers because we don't have any. Okay, and we can see that we have the CPU load about 12 percent. Okay, and uh, we have the personalization set to baby hog hair. That's great. Uh, since it's a BNF and it's correctly done, we have a soil based receiver and more particularly to ASBUS, it's great. RSSI size has strength to ADC, but it's not very useful because we have uh, directly the uh, information with the USD. Uh, strange, we have one not strange, we have air mode permanently um, turned on. So it's up to you if you want to not fly with or without. And we have the anti-gravity, okay, always turn on, it's up to you. And the OSD and dynamic filter, okay, so um, it's up to you if you want to be almost active in acro or not, okay, and even in angle. So uh, be aware um, if you are playing, for example, to select angle mode to make a soft landing after your FPV returning, maybe you will need first to uh, disable it, okay, and or more uh, for the specific flight mode to activate it. So it's what I will do. I will press save and reboot. Okay, I will reconnect. We still have something about 12%. Let's check the 
power and battery we have the default lipo settings okay and let's check the pids well what we can see we have some personalized uh pids they are quite different the d value is relatively small okay so that's great and we have a uh, 1078 deg degrees per second uh, i don't like too much uh the uh, yeah because we have also a super expo applied on uh, i prefer something a little bit more linear so i will apply something more about zero zero but decrease completely this value to 034 some stuff like this and uh it will be enough for me uh the angle and uh, for angle and horizon the level strength have been reduced so that, that the machine is pretty stable uh okay we have some the default tpa value are uh the default one that's one so in terms of filter we have pt1 and you can see that uh we have something probably most associated with the default one but we have the dynamic filtering okay so now uh i forgot probably to save <laughs> yes i forgot to save so i will reapply sorry okay and apply something about 034 okay and we press save and now i will go to the receiver and i will need to power because as i said previously uh, through the usb unfortunately the receiver is not powered that's for me another drawback so we'll turn on the lipo turn on the transmitter and good news as you can see today we have some rssi activities linked on the aux 5 so be sure to select this correct channel for the osd forwarding and what you can see we have an arming set to stick low at threshold uh 1000 so be sure to scale okay play with your mixo to be sure that uh, if you plan to harm with uh, sticks to be uh, at least something about uh, 1000 if it's not harming you will need to increase a little bit this value to something about uh, 1050 it's what i will do okay and no problem we have some dead band directly applied that's great okay and uh, let's check that that uh, everything is at least something about 1990 so i am close to 2000 okay so i should be not so so bad um i will save that okay and if you have a tyrannis probably you will need to change the uh, throttle mapping uh channel mapping but here since i use a jumper no real problem out of the box so i will save okay and now let's check the fault uh be sure to do everything with our home uh disarm so i will remove uh the uh, battery because as you can see we have an arm set to ox one okay so be, and be aware it's let spinning the props okay so that's great and what i will do i will apply on ox one the beeper okay and and because i'm using a three way position so i will apply more in the middle position like this and for ox one like this i will save that so when i am in the middle i will let beep the machine and arm in the last position okay so uh, now I will play with more with the flight mode okay so uh, as you can see by default when you are in uh, the aux 2 okay is uh, in the up position you are in angle so and by default you have also air mode plus anti-gravity and when you are uh, in middle you are angle okay so by sorry upper acro middle angle and then horizon I will reinverse everything so I will more apply angle like this and here i don't know if i will i uh, use a skip horizon but maybe and in uh, uh, lower position i will use uh, the uh, acro plus i will have the anti-gravity okay and i will keep the ox2 and i will also play with the air mode which is here okay okay and apply an ox2 like this and press save so now i don't have any air mode when i'm in angle mode okay uh or or isn't no more so i will be able to land more uh, softly okay 
uh, Horizon, and here I've got Acropress Anti Gravity and Air Mode. So that's great. And I think is everything is configured. I will check the OSD information. So by default we are in NTSC. I will apply some single battery, something to more M50. Uh, we have the timer, okay, that's great. The RSSI, the main battery voltage, the crosser. I will also uh, display the uh, throttle, okay. And uh, well, that's all. And I want to also to display the flight mode because I like it. And uh, I will press something like this, okay. So now everything is here. I'm not a great fan to display the baby hawk, but I will keep like this, and I will also change the uh, uh, um, font because I like and I will select more of the uh, clarity one I really like them so I will upload them it will make the all the information display more wider more clear I really appreciate uh, this uh, font okay it will take a couple of seconds to upload everything on the board can see a lot of activities and then it would be okay okay now it should be okay it's rebooting automatically I should be done okay I will press connect and in term OSD that's great so um, by default you are in NTAC and if you want to turn everything in pay you have to plug the uh, uh, OSD hug camera um, panel okay to change this uh, value in the built-in OSD of the uh, Foxer camera uh, now I will check the default uh, belly configurator okay maybe uh, activate a break and stop that's all and check the current uh, belly uh, firmware install okay so let's check the default belly configurator so actually the battery is not yet connected but I will press the connection here then you are reach this uh, uh, panel then it's time to plug the battery okay and then press read setup and uh, the AC music stop uh, almost immediately it's normal and we can check that the, we have the barely 16.6 uh, .6 version uh, we can activate for example the break and stop okay and um, would be a, a probably a better and everything is here uh, no specific change or settings have been done we can write uh, everything okay and uh, sounds to be good so uh, we have more or less the last uh, firmware available okay so now it's time to check this machine in the field welcome to the demo fly of the uh Emax uh, Baby Orc Air, the Racing Edition 2H version. So I will fly in my favorite sport. Uh, recently covered of a lot of water due to the uh, amazing amount of rain. Uh, this machine I will fly it directly in 4S with a 550 uh, 65C uh, uh, LiPo battery. Uh, we will see how strong are this 1106 uh, 7500 kV. I will start in lost condition to show you a little bit how strong are the punch out and continue in FPV. Let's go! Okay, I will record and let's engage the flight in lost condition. I will harm. So by default you have some... some. Uh... Okay, ready to punch out. One, two, three, go! Ah, not bad. Well, with the default settings, well, fly beautifully. One more time. One, two, three, go. Ah, not bad. Huh? Okay, let's continue in FPV.
small conclusion about this uh, Emax BB Hawk Air D2 inversion. First of all, well, it's a super stable machine. Uh, in acro, whatever in angle you feel that you are um, uh, sailing or uh, flying on some uh, train rail, it's impressive how stable is this machine. It's powerful, but with some two inch. Uh, uh, props despite the presence of 1106 uh, motors and the 4S configuration is not the most powerful machine I ever flew. I think the um, Lizard is a little bit more punchy or the uh, uh, RC Mini from uh, Aurora. Okay, so um, in terms of uh, stability, this is a great winner. Uh, really, it's acro compatible. Don't worry. If you need absolutely the most powerful machine, it's not the most powerful. Uh, in terms of CCD camera, it's just great, uh, the OSD indication as well, everything is great. Uh, just maybe a minor drawback, I feel that the range, the control range with the default Fisky receiver is not amazing. I had some feeling that I lost by a fraction of a second a little bit the contact of the machine within a radius of 80-90 meters and you saw on the OSD information that the uh, Fiesca uh, values uh, was down at something about 40% uh, uh, at minimum even lower so uh, maybe the sensibility of this built-in receiver is not amazing so uh, if you need longer range please change it to something more uh, uh, performance such like uh, the Fiesca XM Plus for example uh, in general, I really like this machine, uh, really a, a good um, machine. I don't think a lot of drawback, okay? So, mere details, for example, the presence of this condensator blocking partially the USB insertion, how hard it is to access to the bind button by default, and some stuff like this. Anyway, a uh, really good machine, one of the best in the market, at least in the 2-inch format. I hope you enjoyed this new video. If you like it, please submit, and see you next time. Bye-bye.